friends from our Look who we've got. We've got John McCall again. John, we, we, we couldn't let John go. We need to talk about music, John. All right, Tony. Give great. us some music talk, right. John. Okay, no problem. <laughs> Where do you want to start? At the beginning. At the beginning. Right. John, favourite bands? Mata Hoopa. Solo artist, David Boy. Brilliant. Um, Beatles, of course. The Beatles. And the Stones. Stones are fab. I'm, I'm stuck at a time warp, Mickey. Razor, Mickey. Razor. I, Razor. I, I'm stuck in a time warp. That's it. I listen to 60s, 70s, sometimes 50s. Like a bit of folk music. You ever venture into 80s music? Not really, Tony. No. I stopped listening to Radio 1 about 1985. Right. When House and that sort of stuff was coming in. Right. Wasn't Didn't, your scene? It wasn't my scene at all. Yeah. And I'm now fervent Radio 2. Right. And uh, Steve Wright in the afternoon. Evans is not too bad either. Chris and Evans. That, yeah. Aye. Razor Chris Evans. Razor star Chris. that fellow, isn't he? And uh, Pick Up Pops. And if I'm up early enough on a Saturday morning, Brian Matthew on the, the 60s show, which is on for two hours, and full of hidden gems, songs people forgot about. He plays Beast Aids. He does well, it's all mostly vinyl, Maggie, which you would like. Yeah. Razor to vinyl as Razor well. for the vinyl. The vinyl's making a big comeback. It's, it's making a comeback. The only problem is we are running out of shops and what's the bad? Right. Okay, right. We, well, we're going to have to change that then. We're okay. going to have to change that. We've got Tesco's, which are starting to, <laughs> as far as I know, sell some vinyl in some of the shops, Maggie. Online. Re- online, okay. Uh, everything's being pushed online. Not everyone is a credit card. Not everyone uh, uh, likes just buying stuff immediately. Some of us um, aficionados, Mickey, let's say, would prefer to go in and get as much enjoyment out of having a browse and coming out with nothing, as opposed to, you know, going in and, and buying something for the sake of buying it or whatever. Yeah. So that's gone. <clears throat> it's a crying shame. Um, the big double double albums used to be fantastic. But looking, brilliant, weren't they? Well, especially when you looked at the artwork and everything else. That's and, right. You know, that's right, and yep. uh, you know it was it was a growing trend because mm. you only got your your, your vinyl yeah. disc and you got it in this in mm. a paper sleeve that's right. inside a cardboard that's right. cover. That's right, and then you would have got the lyrics. artwork and that's photographs, right. that's and it right. got better as, as the it years went on. And you would have got the lyrics maybe printed in as well. It's time yeah. we got a record okay. store back on the town, didn't it? Yeah, I think it is. I think it is. You what know, about Michael Carlin, you legendary? Razor to Michael Razor. Carlin. Razor to Paul Sullivan. Big shout out to Fiona Carlin too. Lovely girl, yeah. great singing voice. A, a yeah, legend already. Yes, yes, yeah. Lovely girl. Yeah. And also Razor coming up. Razor to Mr. Sounds Good himself, Michael McCardle, he used to play a straight over in Monaghan. Sounds Street. good, okay. Mickey. Razor sounds good, okay. sound good, Mickey, isn't yeah, he? Yeah. And a great DJ himself, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah, he was. He was. Brilliant. Now, Tony, I have a question for you. Go ahead. I, I would expect Mickey to maybe have a stab at the answer. You know the iconic Che Guevara t shirt yep. with the print on it? Yep. What is the connection between that and Finn Lizzie? Jim Fitzpatrick, right. Razor Jim Absolutely. Fitzpatrick, Genius, Razor Jim Fitzpatrick. Yeah. Uh, I've met Jim back mm. in the day in Dublin when it her and stuff. So, yeah. Jim, I'd love to come down and give you an interview. And by the way, get well soon, brother. Get okay. well soon. Right. Fell off the right. bike and caught the rims and all that. Yeah. But yeah. I will tell you, he's a load of artwork waiting yeah. to be done. Waiting yeah. to, so a big razor. Get well soon, yeah. Jim. And would you believe such an iconic painting yeah. that man? And I don't think he ever got a shilling for it. No, but. He's actually getting recognised yeah, for it. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, he's, even over in the, the west of Ireland, mm-hmm. they've, they've mm-hmm. done a big, a big mural on a wall over there brilliant, and everything. You know, and no, when you look at jailbreak on that, you know, iconic cover. You know, see that that man's a, a genius. You know, the the artwork of the Western world, absolutely oh, brilliant, brilliant. You know, even the Live and Dangerous yeah. cover, yeah. looking it right up. Yeah, yeah. All the photographs of the yeah. around the world. Huh? Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. So, uh, That's another favourite band of mine, Lizzie. Yeah. Uh, I saw Lizzie count the same when I was young, growing up at Queen's and, 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 and various places like that, you know. I've seen them loads of times I, myself. I was also at, I don't know, were you at the, the Daily, Daily Mount Park concert in 1977? No, no. Right, that was good. I missed that one. Graham Park in the rumour, Fairport Convention, the radiators from space. And, and, and Lizzie topping the bill. Wow. Was, was some gig. And, and our, our good friend Gary Murd, who he passed on. Gary passed on, yes. Yeah. And, and, and Gary was there from a. Gary was in Lizzie a couple of times. He, uh, Black Rose album was yeah. probably 
probably the one, you know. And he was lethal, wasn't he? And of course, Eric Bell, Razor there. Eric. Razor, Eric Bell, mate. Yes, Eric. Paint, another paint coming up for me and you, Eric, when I see you. Eric, Eric played one point. He did. Blues Festival, which is again coming up shortly, isn't it? He did. And a Razor to Ian Sands. Oh, a big Razor in. What a line up. And found the man's yeah. coming again. again. Razor Ian Brilliant. Sands. You, you're, you're waving a magic wand about again. He's waving the blues wand about. Yeah, yeah. And he can wave it. He's a he top man. Can, Tony. He's a great brilliant, man. He's brilliant. And, and uh, James and Sarah, a big shout out to the James and Sarah Sands as well. Mm -hmm. Fantastic musicians. Yeah, yeah. And rightly so, coming from mm -hmm. a good family like, yes. like Ian. And, yeah. and you know, yeah. a wow. Like. And the rest of the blues cats as well. All of them, all of yeah. them, Remy McAvoy and all the team, everybody yeah, everybody's connected with all the music around your It's keeping music alive. You yeah, know, and and keep, it, keep it going. Keep it going. We yeah. want our ears yeah. need it, John, don't yes, they? exactly, Tony. Exactly. We need it for a bit of rock exactly. and roll and a bit we of do. blues. Yes. Or, yeah. And yeah. the Blues Festival is fantastic. It is it? brilliant. It is absolutely brilliant. And it's getting bigger every mm. single year. And you can Ralph McLean, Razor Ralph. Razor Ralph. I met Ralph. Ralph there last year. Yeah, we yeah, Ralph down last year doing, doing the whistle down and that. So, hopefully. Yeah. You know. Um, we, we were heckling you, Ralph, but you're with a bit of banter after, aye, aye. so hopefully we'll get the camera down, we'll have a bit of banter the next time, and you I, know. And I know a man who knows his music, an encyclopedia full of music he has, Ralph McLean. Ralph McLean. He's a bit like yourself, a walking musical yeah, encyclopedia. I'm only good at... Uh, only, uh, well, you're, you're, you're up in the 70s. Yeah. Ralph just takes, he takes it down, uh, he's, he's got so many levels he's, up He's on. got three different shows on, on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night, they're all... You'd maybe do gospel, he would do something, he'd do soul, he would do rock and roll, he'd do whatever. He's, he's very interesting, mm. and, he, and he pulls out the proper sleeves, doesn't he? Mm. Put, the proper discs and puts them on, you know, to make razor, Ralph. Keep up the great That's work. the job I wanted to do. Is that great? Right? Yeah. Watch yeah. yourself, Ralph. Yeah. Come, watch yeah. yourself. <laughs> I wanted to just, to, or maybe work in the archives of BBC or something like that. You know? My God, I'd say you, you would have mm. to give you a big shovel, mm. long tears, because you would dig them all up, wouldn't you? That would be, that would be a place to be, That would be a happy job for you, wouldn't it? Delving into the bowels of the DBC. Oh, exactly. That's the one, isn't it? But Tony, the Beatles, fabulous band. Um, I remember John John Lennon saying before Elvis there was nothing. I've heard people saying before the Beatles there was nothing. You know, so yeah. Uh, I mean, and to think of a band that broke up in 1970, still breaking the, the fourth biggest selling band in America last year. My goodness, you it's know? incredible, isn't it? It's absolutely amazing. You know? But their lyrics and all were some of them were yeah. far out, some yeah. of them all meant things and. Yeah. Yeah. Stories behind mm. them, and a razor to McCartney. Big razor still, McCartney still, still going, still playing, okay. still going on. He's a, he's a champion. He's doing lots for charity oh, as well. Is, so he is. big he razor is. for Paul McCartney. And I had the sad news of uh, George Martin passing away. Indeed, well, one of the fifth Beatles. A couple That's of, right. That was only recently. It was. It wasn't the people. fifth Beatle. Yeah. yeah. Although so, there were a couple of fifth Beatles. George, I'd say this is the fifth Beatle here too. George, George Best was a fifth Beatle as well. That's all right. He was, aye. Because George, George hung around with them. Aye, aye. And he hung, he was a pals with Phil Lynott as well. He was, but you remember he came back, he came back from, from, from Portugal, I think it was, after stuff in Benfica. George had a sombrero hat, maybe it was Spain and that. They called him El Beatle. Yes. <laughs> and that was it. Class. And then he had Stuart Sutcliffe, who was a fifth Beatle as well. You remember Stuart died in Germany. Right. Right, I'm not. I can't remember him now. He died for brain hemorrhage in Germany. Oh, for God's sake! And that was that, that. was that. You know. So there, there were a few fifth Beatles. Very good. But George was amazing. George was actually classically trained, and um, was asked to take over Parlophone, which was really only doing comedy records and wow. very little else. So he built up Parlophone, obviously with the Beatles after they had failed the audition for Decca, and. Um, he, he he also produced you know, Sella Black and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Your, your people like Sella Black, um, Peter and Gordon, Peter Sellers, Bernard Cribbins, all of that. He did all of that. The Goons. That's right, yeah. You know, you know, he, they were a good crack, weren't they? They were a good crack. They were funny, you know. So you've uh, um, have you still got loads of vinyl in the house? In the attic, Tony. In the, uh, what about your first record player? My first record player was an Alba record player that I got. Oh. For my 14th birthday in 1973. Wow, wow, that's the, unbelievable. The first single was See My Baby Jive. I think either that or Life on Mars, one or two of them, and those two songs are still totally iconic. Indeed. And, and played to this day. Roy Wood is a, a massive fan of Roy Wood. I think he's an absolute genius. He is a genius. I um, loved him in the move. Great oh, voice. Great voice, great songwriter. Yeah. Lo loved him in the move. 
um, even when he started up ELO with Jeff Lynn, Lynn was brought into the move so that they could start up ELO. Um, Lynn, I would love to see another guy who's a very clever songwriter, absolutely brilliant, and yeah. glad to see him getting. Uh, and he's we, got Jeff Lynn's ELO yes, going at the moment. Because too. Bev Bevins was said, well, you know, I think you shouldn't be allowed to use the name ELO. Hello. For whatever reason. Mm hmm. I know no, it's, it's it's silly, like but mm. kind of happens bands, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, but it's only it's only Jeff Lynne and, and Richard Tandy from the original. The the rest of the band is actually make up. You like this one, and a riser to them to take that um, band. So there you are. Take that. Mm -hmm. You did say that, didn't you? Yes. The take take parts, take parts back in band. Right, right, right. And that's the rest of the musicians. But they are, they are pretty good. Oh, they're, they're tight then. Obviously. And Collie Mallard's a big riser to Collie. Collie's a big Beatle man, isn't he? Yes, and Collie saw it. Collie. Jeff Lynn's ELO in Liverpool, I think it was last week or the week before. Wow. Riser to Collie and Denise. And another boy's great, a, a musician friend of ours. We'll just give him a shout out anyway. Biggie Cunningham. Biggie. He's Kieran. been playing in Mulligans at Deansgate for 30 years. Oh, brilliant. Huh? Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. In, in, in Manchester. So big razor to the Biggie. Razor Biggie. And we'll be over soon to have the banter with you. Okay. Um, so the, it's a bit of a journey, isn't it, music? It is. I mean, I think the thing about music in general is that it can make you laugh, it can make you cry. Uh, sometimes all it takes is one song, Tony, to bring Brings back. you back that memory that happened. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's something's going on and there's music yeah. playing in the background. Yeah. Something happens. And, and that song will always come to your head, won't You it? know, and it still has the ability to make the hearse in the back of your neck stand up. Even on the back of my neck, friends. Even on the back of your neck. I have plenty here which I need to cut off. He's, come on, he's still he's in happy mode, aren't you, John? I'm in happy mode, Tony. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and Grateful Dead and all the great band are way back to the 60s and that. And, you know, like you know, Jefferson Airplane, I forgot. There's that much great music out there. See, the music comedy now, isn't it? It is, you know. Can you see all the albums in your I can head? I see them all, I can see Vividly. them all. Vividly. I actually saw the Grateful Dead in 1989. Wow. In Philadelphia. And an absolutely fantastic concert. Wow. Concert, you know. And uh, they were going for years, weren't they? Oh, they were, yes. Only and they did the farewell gigs this year, but Jai Garcia died a couple of couple of years back, and that was basically the end of it. But I have quite a lot of memorabilia in terms of uh, <coughs> concert ticket stubs which I kept over the years, and I have one in particular, which is a Van Morrison Ulster, or sorry, Whitla Hall, nineteen seventy nine, two pound fifty. Wow, the Whitla Hall was some spot, Hall, you wasn't know. it? Belfast. Um, very iconic place because when my boys were doing their exams in there, I told them to be careful because leave it the way it was because you know Jimi Hendrix played it. Wow, we so, there you are. Wow, we and uh, the Empire is a great spot. There's so many great spots in Dublin and Belfast, you yeah, know, yeah, and the whole of Ireland really. The Keys and Galway and all. You know. been Dolan's there. Warehouse in Limerick, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, and remember Moran's Hotel, Tony. Moran's Hotel, uh, where a lot of bands got there. Because they're breaking it, that. Boomtown Rats would have played there in that radio right. from space. Uh, you know. Did you listen to the the Boomtowns and all that there? Or? I did. I, I loved the Boomtown Rats. I, right. I actually, and I have a story for you. The first time I saw them was at Daily Mount in 77. Myself and, and another guy was a Queen's with Barney Maguire and a, a Razor to Barney. Razor to Barney. Uh, Barney's in Florida at the middle. Um, oh. But we we um, decided to go down to see the Boomtown Rats 28th of December 1977 and there used to be they were playing in the snack bar at the Queen's there used to be a restaurant called the Crystal Garden remember beside the club yeah. bar so we went for a bite to eat before the concert and who came in but the Boutine Rats <laughs> and who sat at our table Jerry Cott and Mr Gelda himself wow. so there you are and yes Johnny Fingers was wearing pyjamas was he? he was, yeah. <laughs> Razor Johnny Fingers uh, did you know Johnny Fingers and Pete Briquet are cousins I didn't know that. Mm, they are. But another tight band, brilliant yes, band too, yes, weren't they? Yes, they absolutely were. Um, and they lasted, what, from 77 to about, what, 83, and they called it a day after called that. Called it a day, yeah. Know. But uh, Brent O'Brien, a razor to Brent. Oh, Brent. And Anne. And Anne. I think Brent and Anne saw um, the Raps the last time they played Belfast and uh, said they were pretty good. Like probably showing the razor, but but aren't we all told? Ah, uh, sure, why not? So sure, why not? Mm -hmm. Age is only a number. Yeah. Uh, locally, we've got the four of us. Brilliant yeah. band. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. In their twenty sixth mm -hmm. year, brilliant right. band. Right, there is a story behind that, Tony. They were showcasing an album in the powerhouse in Islington in nineteen eighty nine, and the staff and Mary went up there, 
and your sander came up with this as well. And it was like walking into McLogan's in Uri. There were that many people from Uri there. <laughs> in Islington. In Islington. Angel. Yeah. A big yeah. shout out to all yeah. our friends in Islington. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. And I've still got loads of friends in Islington. Yeah. I love that area, my lovely area. Is the Hope and Anchor still there? Uh, I think it is, mm-hmm. it is, it is, mm-hmm. it is, but it's a great, the, the glass house and all, there's all, so That's many That's where a lot of the, the London punk bands and the pub rock bands got, got their start, you know. Elvis Costello would have played Hope and Anchor, the Jam, all of those bands, and straight mm-hmm. out to Paul Weller and, and, and Elvis. Big El- and Elvis Costello, Declan McManus. Declan McManus. And a big shout out to Ronan, good friend of mine in London, his brother. Mm-hmm. And Ronan, you'd have your work cottage <laughs> cutting this hair, I'll tell you that. Ronan, got, he's a barber now. Well done, right. Ronan, raise her brother. Right. Good friend of mine. All right, great, right, okay. So we're all connected. Right, Declan, right, right. Elvis Cost- mm. Costello's brother. And his father was Ross McManus. There you go. There you are. See, you. I told you this man's in the secret. He was a band leader as well. So the Bible Code Sundays, big shout out to the boys. Bible Code Sundays, Andy Nolan and all the team there. You also want to have, you also what I had Ian Jury, um, the Motors, all of those bands. Ian Jury. They would have played the Hope and Anchor as well. The Stranglers, you know. And Ian Jury was very close friends of a good friend of mine that sadly passed away, John Earl, the saxophone John, player. And Ian Jury, the two Gyps- boys ended Gypsy up. Gypsy Earl, yes. Yeah. I John Irish Earl, the Irish Earl oh, of I, saxophony. Who, who played on Thin as, with Thin as Lizzie as well. Thin as Lizzie. I think our, our mutual friend Bernie Larkin would, know, would have known John quite mm. well. Well, I, I would have been the tour managing. End of that, right? And I used to. John would have been in, in, right. in, in the van with myself, and would right. Well, when 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 um, the Graham Park and the Rumour were touring, stick to me. Wow. Um, who was playing sax? Who played the iconic sax on Dancing in the Moonlight? The main the man, man himself, John the Irish Earl of yeah. Saxophony. Yeah. That's John Irish Earl. That's, that was yeah. his nickname. Yeah. But he added John the Irish Earl of Saxophony. Mm. So check that out. Razor Johnny Mulholland, an all great saxophone player. An all great saxophone Bill Finnegan, right. brilliant. There's, Bill so, Finnegan. there's so much talent. Colleague of mine, Bill Finnegan. There you go. Yes. Bill's a gentleman, yeah. isn't he? Yes, yeah. And he, he's pretty good in the sax. He's, not bad. he's not bad. At. He's not bad. <laughs> he's pretty good, he's not bad. Mm. So he's, he's in between. And Bill, Tony, we're only joking here. And Tony Morgan, of course. Don't forget Tony oh, Morgan. How could we forget Tony Morgan? Yeah. Razor. So um, who else now? Big around your eh? You know, the... Um, Back in the day, Mickey Dorn and Mickey, aye, a bit before my time. I mean, Mickey Dorn, Trish Grattan, Robert, uh, um, Patricia Grattan could sing. We were talking to Jason there yeah. recently, yeah. And we will, we're having a panther show coming up about Patricia I, I Grattan. I think Patricia actually recorded a couple of programmes for Granada Television back in the day, didn't she? She did, yep. Uh, Patter Crown was good as well, but in a lot of cases, these guys are, are, are Tony Bagland, of course, you know, is a multi talented man, you know. But um, Razor told me. But he used to love Talk of Town. Talk of Town was great when you had Toe Jam and bands like that. Wow. Toe Jam featuring Jerry Anderson. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. Mm-hmm. And you know, uh, Whiskey would have been playing Brave and Reg- regularly as well. Great band as well. You know, but there was one night, it was a uh, Monday night around about Christmas, before Christmas 1978, this band appeared called Sert X. And it was a mixture of dreams and one or two other bands from about the time as well. That must have been something. And they just did a jam and that was it. Well, it wasn't even a gig, just a one big huge uh, well, jam. No, it was just, yeah, that was, it, that's what it isn't was. Isn't that good, bud? Yeah, it was brilliant. I love gigs like that. It was, it, was, it, was, it was down the corner, it was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And then 78, I think, Marmalade played. Do you remember Marmalade? Marmalade, played? yeah. Aye. Aye. Yeah. But and then, a big shout out to Jackie McCauley, another great guitar player. Jackie Razor McCauley, Jackie. Razor Jackie, yeah. A good friend of ours. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's so much musical talent about it, isn't there? Yeah, there is, you know, but, and, and, and the good thing about, I suppose, technology has, has, has it's, the way it's come on has its pretty, um, pretty bad points, as we know, from the demise of record shops yeah. and that. But, I mean, it, it could well be easier to get a break now due to YouTube and that, you know, yeah. where, where people are getting quite a lot of hits for, for doing something. Many times, have you seen it on Facebook, you know, what's this? This, mm. this has broken the internet and all this sort of stuff. Or where you have a 10 year old child coming on and, and singing, you know, a Guns N' Roses song differently or whatever. Or, yeah. Or these virtuosos and the child prodigy. So it's absolutely brilliant. And even for anybody who's in it, you know, they can get, they can get their music out there. Yeah. You know, they don't have to depend as much on middleman men and getting ripped off and all that, you know, yeah. so I think maybe some good points are you, you have to take from it. 
the way technology is going. That's it. And a big shout out to the McCollum brothers who were playing here last weekend. Great, great to see these lads. And I bought the show coming your way. Maybe up in the pond. You know, you can talk to James Pond about that. Uh, they're, they're good lads. Um, Don't forget the nerves as well. Do you remember the well, nerves? The nerves. The nerves. And the nerves used to be a tempted scandal. Wow. Remember tempted scandal? Attempted sca- Did you ever hear of a band called the, the Daffodils? No, I didn't. Razor for the Daffodils, mm. what a bunch, mm. honest to God. I'll tell you who they are when this is, when this is over, I'll tell you. Are they are. Morrissey? <laughs> because he used to have a Daffodil hanging no, out. No, 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 they're all no. local. They're like that, see that gig you were talking about, all the musicians mm-hmm. turn into a, mm-hmm. a big jam. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what these guys mm-hmm. were. Right, so the Daffodils, right. Razor right. for the right. Daffodils, right. best to crack right. they are, you know. But a type of scandal, basically the McCall brothers from the matter, right. Pat, Patty and Tommy and John, uh, cousins of mine. And then they got signed up by Terry Healy's record label. Unbelievable. And um, Good Vibrations. And yeah, won the Battle of it. the Bands and really should have been massive, you know, but it, it, it didn't work out. Right. Um, that's another good man, Terry Healy. Razor Terry. Razor Terry. Did and on a, on a special shout out, Razor Paul Sherry and Grania Duffy. You are doing very well. They're over in LA. Yeah. I told you, you guys are going far. And I'm telling you, Razor. Roger Duffy's excellent. Oh, fab. Good been friends of mine as well. You know. all. But the thing about it was, I remember I took our Matthew to see Good Vibrations, and it was a bit scary. Was it? Because I was sitting there, and I was looking at these boys being played on stage and their guys, or on screen, you know, like the outcasts or the undertones. And the actual outcasts and undertones, some of them I would have known personally. Right. It was a bit weird. Right. It must you know, have been a bit weird. It was yeah. a bit weird. I Did they do all right, but it came out okay, yeah? I, I thought it was an absolutely brilliant show. Brilliant. Uh, Richard Dormer was sensational as um, uh, Terry Healy. Um, there, was a, uh, there was a young lad, Ryan McParland, you, you know. Ryan, Ryan from Mullabone. Ryan was, Razor Ryan. Ryan was in it, and um, one or two boys had a love hit as well. Not a, not a show I watch, but um, in a party, or Matthew does, and that's what he said. Another one, Pat McManus Band. Pat McManus Pat, Band. we'll give you a shout out yep. the other day, a big ramp to get your gear back, so yes. big razor to the Pat McManus yeah, Band. Yeah, I read about that, Pat, yeah. Pat I remember Mama's Boys, good band. Yeah, fabulous band, Mom, Mom, yeah. Mama's Boys yeah. were out there too. Like, yeah. And the Lord does, Pat's brother Tommy, mm-hmm. another legend, so mm-hmm. big razor to the Pat McManus yeah. Band, he's our back bigger yeah. than ever. Brilliant. And Brilliant. Uh, even Pat... Pat's fiddling techniques, yeah. like Irish champion, what, 11 mm-hmm. times That's or something? That's right, that's right. Fantastic they were absolutely band. superb. Brilliant band. Um, and, you know, sort of... Paul and Marty. Yep. You used, used to play quite a lot of the, the um, major shows, that were, I'd say, or the outdoor shows that we had at the start of the 80s. And that yeah. Like Brilliant band, aren't they? Yep. Class. I know there's new stuff coming along. Yeah, yeah. You know, I haven't heard much. Must, must give it a listen. I think the three, you have to get the train to come into Irish Town. Mm-hmm. Right, or, right. That's the latest album. Right. So uh, the blues trained to mm-hmm. Irish Town. Sorry, Pod, writer again. <laughs> well, I think we're we're sort of near the end of the music then, are we? Not really, Tony. We're only starting. We're only starting. Get the paints out. <laughs> we're going to be here at eight o'clock tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you what. We'll, we'll get you back on again, maybe, to talk about music. Okay, okay. Well, that do. I'll do all right, Tony. But yeah. I'll tell you what, it's been very interesting, John. Mm. And it's been a pleasure to have you on the Banta show. Thank you very much. And we'll, we'll definitely get you back on. Okay, fine. That's all right. Yeah. You know the old crack, John. From me and John McCall, friends, right, right sir. We're in here.